afternoon, everyone. It's really lovely to be with you on a Friday. Um, it looks like we have an international crowd today. Some people from Sweden, Norway, and then all over the United States. I am delighted you all are here with me. I do have the little running chat screen up in another window. So if you're having problems, I will glance over there from time to time and make sure that I stay up. Uh, can you all hear me? Anybody? Uh-oh. Oh, okay. You all can't. See, this is where this is really useful. It's that feedback. So what we're going to talk about today, this is the third part in our, and this will just be an ongoing thing we're doing, in our citing sources. Uh, I am thrilled. We have so many people who are interested in doing this. You all will become better family historians and better genealogists. So I'm really excited. It's Friday, so we're gonna keep this one pretty low key. It will be not; these will not be the most difficult sources you ever write. But I think because they're vital records, you will find you use these a lot. And being able to evaluate vital records is really, really important. And vital records um, are usually what we we call birth, marriage, and death records, right? These are the big event records. So let's step back a second. Maybe not all of you have been in some of my source classes. So why do you cite your sources? Why is this important? Why not just attach things and go merrily along your way? Because you need to be able to find the source again if you need it. I'm just guessing that many of you are like me. You've put some information in your tree. You didn't attach the source. You didn't, you know, document it. And then you need to go back and find it and you don't. You don't know where to find it and that's the piece you need. It is so frustrating. A little bit of extra time and you can do this. And I'll show you how you can evaluate the quality of the source when you have conflicting evidence. We often find things that don't make sense, right? When so and so got married in 1840 or did they get married in 1845? That can make a big difference when it comes to parentage. You know, if one of those comes from a family tree and the other one comes from the actual certificate, which one are you going to believe? It's a pretty easy decision. But if you just have two dates and you don't know where they come from, you can't really make a good decision. So this will help you make a better decision on what it is you're going to do. Family history is not about finding records to attach to your family tree. Sure, it's fun, right? Yay, I found something, I've attached it. It's about determining kinship between people and understanding their identity and telling their story. Let's face it. We're the family historians. We're the ones who make our families come to life. We're the ones who take all of those who've been forgotten from the past and tell their story. And the better we are at pulling all this information together, the better the story is we're going to tell. Family history is about what you do with the records after you find them. And being able to really understand the records is key to being able to tell that story. Now, the absolute best best resource, hands down, everybody in the genealogy world will tell you this, is evidence explained by Elizabeth Schoen Mills. And I am, this is not an official ancestry endorsement, but I, this is what I recommend. It's a huge book. The book itself is like seven, eight hundred pages. It weighs more than you really want to know. And, but you can now get a downloadable copy at this URL https www.evidenceexplained.com slash bookstore or just go to Google and type in evidence explain bookstore and you should be able to find the link. It's really nice. You can download copies to three different devices and then you can look things up. And as the more you get used to this and come to these little sessions, you'll start digging into her book, which may seem overwhelming at first, but the more you get used to it, you'll start looking at that and go, I know what that means. You'll be amazed at how smart you get and how quickly you get there. All right, so we're gonna look at two different types of vital records that might be stored on Ancestry. And we're gonna look at what we put into a source, or citation, sorry. All right, so we, have, we do two different things with them. Some of them are indexes or compiled indexes, which means we bring a whole lot of data together and we just put that actual basic information out there. We'll go through that one first. And then some of them are we have the actual certificates and images 
and which are a lot nicer but not always available and we'll look at how you do that as well okay so here's the compiled index Virginia marriages 1740 to 1850 and this particular entry is for some of my ancestors in my tree Juliet Gross and Aaron Fazell. they were married on the 22nd of January in 1844 in Bedford Virginia all right so how do I write the source for this First, I'm going to list the database because because it's a compiled index. I can't. The first thing you usually put is who came up with this information or who's responsible for it. But because it's a compiled index, that one really doesn't count. And I'll show you an example where it does in a minute. So, and we'll put this in double quotes: Virginia marriages, 1740 to 1850. Great. And you'll always find the database right up here. And this is from the record page. I usually make a snapshot of this and stick it in with my uh, source or my citation. What is the medium? How, how is this organized? It's a database online or you could just put database. Now when you look at the medium in citations, you'll see database or database and images. If it doesn't have images, you know it's just an index. And in fact, if you just wanted to put index in there or compiled index, that would be fine too. What is the source? The source here is Ancestry.com. I'm finding the information on Ancestry. Publication details. All right, where do I go if, if, let's say, you were looking at my family tree and you notice that I have this source, how, where would you go to find it? I found it at Ancestry.com and I accessed it on September 14th, 2012. And why the date is really important, especially for online things, is because 10 years from now, it may not be there anymore, but this document's when I found it. A lot of online obituaries go way after time, which is why you should always make a copy. But the date tells somebody at this date and time, uh, at this date and time, that is what I found there. And then identifying information. This is an inf entry for Juliet Gross and Aaron Fazell. The marriage date is 22nd January 1844 in Bedford, Virginia. And there should be no parenthesis down there. Sorry about that. Now, why is this important? Because if I go to Ancestry.com, I go to that data collection, right? See, I go to Ancestry. I know that I can go to Virginia Marriages, 1740 to 1850. That tells me what I can search on. That will lead me to the record. This is so you can get back to something easily. You don't have to think. You don't have to remember. You've got it all written down here. Now, this is for marriages, but if it's a birth, you could say birth date, death, death date. Anything that you think is important to helping to identify this record at a later time. Now, you could stop there if you wanted to, and that would be perfectly fine. And you can also add, and I like to do this because it helps me understand who supplied the information. Where did it come from? So I'm going to add a citing Dodd Jordan et al. Should be one L in the et al there. Early American marriages, Virginia to 1850. And where did I get that from? Well, if you look down here in the record page where it says source information, see where it says original data? Dodd Jordan R et al. I did a really bad copy paste there. Early American marriages. And then you can put in the publisher if you want. It's up to you how you know detailed you want to get. But this gives me an idea of where it came from. All right. So this right here would be what I would put in for my source. Not, there's no hard and fast rule that says they all have to look the same. You might not put database online. You may put just index. You may write what you cite differently. You may feel that just the names and the event date is enough. You don't have to put the location. That's up to you, but remember, the point of the sourcing, especially at this point, you're not going to probably go publish papers for everything you research. So what this is really for at this point is to help you find it again if you need to. Better to be safe so you can find it. But anyway, so Virginia Marriages, Database Online, Ancestry.com, the URL, Access, the date, Entry for Juliet Gross and Aaron Fazell, the information I would use to search for it, and then the citing. So that's for a compiled index. Now let's say that I'm going to look for something that has an image. Uh, North Carolina death certificates, we have those online at Ancestry. 
and this would be the record page. It's always good to pull this up because it gives you the basic information here. And this tells you what you, I mean, this, these are the search terms. This is your entry information. And then down here, we'll tell you more information about where it actually came from. We'll reference that in a minute. All right, so this is an actual collection of images, and I know who published them. And in this particular case, it's the North Carolina State Board of Health. Or you could just put North Carolina if you wanted to. That is the state that's responsible for these. That's completely fine. Remember, sourcing is often referred to as an art and not a science. So just be consistent and make sure you're documenting things in ways that you can find what it is you're looking for. That's why we source. The database is North Carolina Death Certificates 1909 to 1975. The medium, I put database and images. Some people will just put digital images. That's fine, too. Source, Ancestry.com, publication details, Ancestry.com, access 14, September 2012. And sometimes people have been like, well, I've got this attached and I'm not writing sources. I don't know the exact date. If it's still there online, just put the today's date where you wrote the source. That's fine. Nobody's going to go back and check the date you actually found it. It'll be fine. Identifying information. Entry for James Thomas Payne. Died 19 May 1934. I didn't include the death location, his father, his mother's name. Though I could if I wanted to, if I felt that was important in having to locate this. Where? And again, you can leave this part off if you want, but I put it on because it's important to me when I'm evaluating. One, you source because you want to find. Two, you do it because you want to evaluate. So it's North Carolina. State Board of Health, Bureau of Vital Statistics, uh, North Carolina Death Certificates, blah, blah, blah. N microfilm S.123, North Carolina State Archives, Raleigh, North Carolina. So when I write out the citation, it would look like North Carolina State Board of Health, database name, database and images, Ancestry.com, publication details, and entry for James Thomas Payne, died 19 May 1934 and you can stop there or you can add on the site semicolon citing North Carolina death certificates and then the rest of the information it's up to you whatever makes you happy okay so and somebody asked where to record this and I I can show you that here in one second here so here's a basic template I use when I'm trying to write a source or a citation for a vital record. Who? If it's from a single entity and not compiled. And when you start to look at more of our indices, you'll see where they're compiled. Database. Name of the database in quotes. Medium, such as databases, images, digital images, database, index, something like that. Source. Ancestry.com, Family Search. A lot of states have online digital, whatever the name of their website is. Put that in italics, okay? Publication details. URL and then accessed and then date. Now, I have, when I write my citations, I just put the most basic URL, assuming I can get back to where I'm going. Some people will paste in the actual URL or something a little bit more lengthy. That's up to you. I just don't bother. But again, that's up to you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Identifying information. So you can do the search. And then where? The original source. I put the original source in so that it helps me in evaluating. Let's go back up here for a second to the compiled only. Let's say that I'm looking at Juliet and Aaron, and I find that they have a child listed, say, in a 1870 household that, <clears throat> we think it's a child anyway, that was born in 1840. And I have documented here they were born in 1844. So how do I know which one's right? How do I know if that's a child maybe from a previous marriage of Aaron's, maybe it's not a child at all, it's some cousin or whatnot. How do I how do I start to determine the validity of this particular date? Maybe this marriage date is wrong. Well let's think about this. This is from a compiled source, right? Jordan Dodd went through and presumably pulled a lot of indices together, compiled a lot of different sources and put them in one. Now, if somebody's going through and pulling a lot of data and putting it in a compiled index, the chances that something is wrong along the line are a lot higher than if you're looking at 
the actual certificate, right? So this helps you evaluate. If you say this was from an index, you're like, you know what? I need to dig deeper. What if that date is wrong? It may not be right. I may need to go find the actual marriage certificate. So this helps you understand what it is you're looking at. Also, let's say that you're looking here at the, uh, there you go, the death certificate. Now on the death certificate, it usually has um, age at birth and it's later on down here, it has his birth date. And let's say this is the best, at the moment, the best source you have for James Thomas's birth date. Well, that's fine. That's a reasonable source. But this was at his death, and he died at the age of 75. So what that means is who's ever reporting his birth date very likely was not there when he was born. So they are not a primary informant. They, do, they were not there at the time. So while this is a really, really good and accurate source for his death date, chances are really good it's right, though it could be wrong, but it's re really good. His birth date may be off by a few days, years, whatever. So you have to take that with a grain of salt and you have to realize that you may need to go find a different source to actually prove when he was born. So this helps you evaluate the information you're looking at. So, how to do a tax and family tree maker. And I'm going to, uh, if you'll indulge me here for a second, because somebody asked me where the, where the source information is recorded. Let's, uh, let's just go in here for a second. I'm going to bring up family tree maker, and then I'll show you how to italicize as well. Do, 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 do. It always takes a little bit long for this to come up. But it did, and it didn't crash, which is always a good thing in a live demo. All right, so there are a couple ways that you can create a source, but let's say that I'm going to go to Nicholas Navely here. Actually, I want to go to, who are we just doing? We're doing Aaron Fazal. Okay. Um, here we go. All right, so I'm on Aaron Fazal in my tree. I'm going to click over here to person. And I already have this marriage date in here and I already have its source. But let's say that I am starting over from scratch here. So what I would do is I would right click here so I can add a fact. Or I can right here click on this little blue add a fact button. So let's say I do that. And then I'm going to add a marriage shared. Awesome. Shared means that it's shared between two people. And then over here, I can click new. And then there are a couple things you can do here. You can either, if this is a brand new source for you, you can click new and you can name it and enter in the information. In this case, it would be uh, Virginia Marriages. 1840 to 1950 or whatever that was. I already have that in there, so I don't want to do that. Or I can choose from my drop-down list. Uh, there we go. I can do that. And then I can, and then what I usually do is I go over here and I either have media attached because I've attached it from my tree or I've done a screen grab and stored it in a temporary directory and I bring in the new media by attached new media and then I usually write my source and that's how you can uh, collect these here's something else that you can do <clears throat> let's say that you just do this and choose Virginia marriages 1740 to 1850 if you then go up here see where it says sources click over here we'll go down here to Virginia Marriages, 1740 to 1850. So this is, it says no source citation information, which means I haven't written anything out yet. Now what I can do is, I've already entered like seven of these, so I can just go cut and paste. I can do this. Go up here. And then I can just change the information here 
And this was information for Juliet. Juliet Gross and Aaron Fazal. And then it had the marriage date and whatnot. And then this will show me down here what my citation looks like. And then if you wanted to add a note, and sometimes we do this, like we'll say, let's say you've got a John Smith who married a Mary Jones, and it lists the father as um, Thomas Jones, and you wanted to make a note of that. This record documents, we'll say here, Juliet's father is Henry. I believe that was his name. All right, then we click out of there. And you'll notice you get this extra little note there that would also appear in your citation. And if there's something really important that you would like in your citation, you can do that. So, all right, I'm going to get rid of this one because I already have this one done. But that's one place to do it. Oh, another thing that you can do here, uh, it doesn't automatically italicize for you. But down here, if you click down here in the actual reference note. Actually, let me do it in one that actually has an image. Oh, that one's already done. There we go. So I'm going to click down here in the reference note. I'm going to click the I symbol. No. First, I'm going to highlight what I want italicized. Then I'm going to click the I, and it's italicized. So that's very nice. And then if I go up here and I double-click on this, it brings up the little Edit Source Citation box. And you won't see the italics here, but if you go over here to Reference Note, you will actually see it in the what gets included. And where you will see this listed, say I go over here to publish. And I'm going to go down here to no relationship reports. I'm going to print out a family group sheet. And this one is for Aaron Fazell and Juliet Gross. So I create a report. And let me show you how you get sources included in your report. Right up here, you see where it says Family Group Sheet Options? And this will be on any report we have. If you click this little site item here, it says Items to Include. Down here, it'll say Sources, and you can include sources or not. But because you all are really good at documenting what you do so you can figure out what you've done, you'll probably include them. And they show up here as these little footnotes. The marriage is uh, footnote number five. So if I go down here, five, Virginia marriages. And I don't have my double quotes in there. And I, or my, you know, my double quotes, but I should. And see, Ancestry.com, and then it comes up in the, the uh, correct format. So that is a place where you'd see it. And if you have all your sources, and they're all beautifully formatted so that you can understand them and you know what you're supposed to do with them, you get these lovely little sheets here when you print out these different reports. And things look a lot nicer and neater. And when you're trying to go back and explain to somebody where you found something, it's really easy. You can go, oh, right, Virginia Marriages. So this is where I found the marriage record. And if I wanted to find it again, I would just simply go to this database, type in this information, and I'd be there. So that is what you want to do. All right, so... That is not what I wanted to do. Go back down here to my end. All right, and this is where I um, uh, show you guys what I just showed you online, but I wanted to make sure you know where to actually enter it in. And that is vital records and how to source them. I hope this got you guys started. Uh, we have some more events coming up in September. On Tuesday, I'm going to talk about how do I know I'm right? And how you know you're right is all about how we start to take information that is conflicting and um, how do you start to put that all together into the story? How do you make sense of it? How do you determine you know, when one piece of evidence is right and another piece is not? And there's basic ways that you do that 
And if you just follow those rules, you'll find that your decision making is a lot easier. So we're going to talk about that. And this will build on some of the stuff we're doing with sourcing. Um, and then Chris Cowan, our barefoot genealogist, is going to talk about Family Tree Maker on the 20th, the 25th, and the 27th. And then she will be doing one of her tweet chats on the 28th. It has been, as always, a pleasure talking to everybody today. Um, I'll be on the chat for a little while to answer questions. And uh, I will see you guys next on Tuesday. Thank you and goodbye.